I'm Larry Walther and this is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com Chapter 2. In this module we will be discussing T-accounts. T-accounts are simply tools, they're quick and simple tools to see how a small number of transactions and events will impact a particular company. It's not actually used for maintaining accounting records for a business. It's an analysis tool or in a classroom setting it's very likely to be used as a teaching tool. The T, it's called a T account because of its shape. It looks like a T as we'll see in a moment. Debits are on the left and credits are on the right. Uh, the balance is the amount by which debits exceed credits or vice versa. Now here's an illustration of a T account on the left for cash and on the right hand side of the screen I've produced the actual page from the general ledger for cash and you'll notice all of the debits to cash uh, looking at the ledger 25,000, 4,000 and 4,800. Those debits correspond to the left hand side of the T account. The credits correspond to the right hand side of the T account. So the T account is an iconic representation of the general ledger and you'll notice in this particular case that total debits are 33,800 and total credits are 7,500. Debits exceed credits by $26,300 which is the balance that you find in the general ledger account for cash. Moving on, let's also talk about chart of accounts because you might hear a reference to a company's chart of accounts. A chart of accounts is just a listing of the accounts in use by a particular company. Oftentimes uh, the chart of accounts, each account name corresponds to a particular account number. Oftentimes that numbering has a very logical sequence to it. For example, here I've got three asset accounts and I've elected to begin each of those with a one or make them the 100 type accounts. Similarly, liabilities might be the 200 type accounts and so forth. That allows someone to quickly look at the chart of accounts and the corresponding balances for each account to know whether they are asset accounts or expense accounts or whatever they might be. It further allows uh, ease of division. If, if a company has five bank accounts, say cash is account 101, you might have account 101.1 for A bank, 101.2 for B bank, 101.3 for C bank and so on. So it gives you tremendous flexibility to add accounts, subdivide accounts, maintain accountability over those accounts. Um, finally, I would say it also facilitates computer sorting. It's far easier to sort by numerical base rather than a, than a narrative verbal type base in, in a computer context. Okay. While we're on the subject of uh, subdividing information, there are certain accounts that may have subsidiary accounts to back them up. Uh, think about the accounts receivable account that you've been exposed to thus far. Uh, that is a control account. It represents the total receivables of an entity. However, obviously you need to know what customers make up each of the amounts in the total accounts receivable. And that's where a subsidiary account would come in. A subsidiary account is backup or auxiliary records to support the balances found in the general ledger or the general ledger account also called the control account. Uh, it's important that you reconcile your subsidiary and control accounts. Here I have an example. In this particular case I've got the accounts receivable general ledger account on the left. It's the green looking account. And you can see I had a beginning balance of $30,000. I had a sale on January 11th. I debited accounts receivable for $6,000. I apparently had collections on January 12th and 24th for $11,000 and $8,000 respectively. And then I had another sale for $2,000 on January 30th. Well that gave me, if we look at the general ledger account, I know that I'm owed $19,000 in total. What I don't know is who owes me that amount. So I've got the subsidiary account shown for Compton, Fisher, Sunderman and more. And you can see which transactions related to which customer and what the balances are. Notice it's important in the reconciliation that the $19,000 total be identifiable by individual customer. What other accounts, in addition to accounts receivable, might involve subsidiary accounts? Well, uh, you would also have the potential for subsidiary accounts related to accounts payable. Uh, you would have this, this potential for subsidiary accounts related to your land buildings and equipment to show not only how much you have in total, but what individual accounts comprise or what individual amounts comprise that amount in the ledger. Uh, there's any number of opportunities where you may find it beneficial to have subsidiary records to back, back up the amounts found in the general ledger. But importantly, the debit credit format that you've seen 
uh, the self-balancing set of accounts, debit, cash, credit accounts, receivable, those are bouncing off of the general ledger accounts. The subsidiaries are backup in a database system. You can well imagine it's simply a matter of data mining. Uh, in a manual context, you might even use a carbon paper or a one write type system to keep up with your subsidiary accounts as you post a general ledger amount. It's simultaneously updating the subsidiary accounts.